Kirk here. Hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to talk more about energy and specifically about how we can evaluate different energy systems. So if you'll remember, you've actually built some different energy systems. Some of them have been really small. Some of them have been really big. And it may not surprise you to know that depending on what the use is for our energy system, sometimes the big energy system is the most appro appropriate, the, the one that we would want to build. And sometimes it's the small one that we would want to build. And so we're going to spend some time today looking at different energy systems and specifically where we get our power from so we can decide what might be more efficient uh, for the rescue team. So let's jump right into the lesson, all right? So the first thing, as usual, is gonna be the warm up, And here, you'll start your analyzing of an energy system, okay? So we've got this uh, simple system here with the crank and a flywheel with a generator that uh, powers up a battery and turns on an LED light. You'll have some questions to answer with that, so take a few minutes and do the warm up. And then when you're done with the warm up, we're going to move on to activity two, where we will revisit the article on energy inventions. So uh, just a re reminder, um, we have this investigative question that we are approaching um, in this chapter. How do objects get energy? And we had three different claims and we eliminated one of those claims. Uh, claim three, which was that only living things have energy. So we're left to, with just two claims. Claim number one, that objects make their own energy, or claim number two, that objects get energy from other objects that have energy. And uh, in the article, you read the article, I'm hoping that you read the article, and that you made your three annotations. Today we're going to reread just part of the article to find additional evidence to support or refute, um, or meaning go against, one of these other energy claims. It's important that we learn to do this because um, sophisticated sci or readers, which scientists would fall into that category, will often reread texts in order to better understand difficult ideas. So, you know, the best uh, writings that I've read. I read them over and over again, and every time I read them, I learn something new, something different stands out. When we uh, read something more than once, we call that persistence. Persistence means that you just keep going back, right? And you keep going back, and you keep going back. And in this case, persistent reading means that we just do this over and over um, in order to better understand it. This is all part of the concept of active reading. And it's a skill set that takes time. So uh, don't be frustrated if it takes you, you know, a while to get this habit going. Um, it's just not something that is natural for um, for us, but uh, but it should be. So you're going to read the last two paragraphs of this article, and you're reading with a very specific focus, and that is figuring out how objects get energy. Okay. And if you come across a section, a group of words, a, um, a paragraph or a sentence, highlight that uh, so that you can easily go back to it and see how things get energy. Okay, so remember, uh, we're going back to Energy Inventions article and just the last two paragraphs that you're going to reread. Uh, and make some annotations, and then you've got a couple of questions, right? Again, everything is um, focused on our claims. Claim one, object make, objects make their own energy. Claim two, that they get them from other objects. So take a few minutes, about five to 10 minutes, to reread those last two paragraphs and make a couple of annotations and answer these questions using complete sentences. When you're done with that, we can talk about activity three, where we're going to evaluate different energy sources, all right? This brings us back to our chapter two question. How can the rescue workers get energy to the batteries and their equipment during the rescue missions? Remember, their flashlights failed, their radios failed. They need to be able to charge those while they're out in the field. 
So since energy always comes from somewhere, right? The energy team is gonna need an energy source and you're gonna help them to choose one. So um, I want you to think, this is a, a question here, like what would make a particularly good energy source for the rescue team? So think about just not what that source needs to be, but just think about what would the qualifications be for a good energy source or a good option for the rescue team? Like for instance, should it be portable? Would, would being able to, to easily carry it around be a good option for the rescue team? Or does that even matter in your opinion? So think about just for a second, what kind of options, what kind of features you think would make one energy source better than the other? And we've got seven different types of energy here. And if we were, if, if you're watching this and we're in class, we're gonna go over these cards. If you're watching this because you're not in class, you're just gonna have to look at these cards on the screen and then you're gonna have to decide if you do not know what they mean, you're gonna have to do a little bit of extra research. But we have fuel burning power plants where we take you know some sort of petroleum like oil charcoal natural gas we burn that to create heat usually we then heat up water to to move turbines and they move generators which creates electricity or we just have a human powered generator like the hand crank that we used in uh, our demonstration there's nuclear power where we take uh, radioactive materials that are breaking down, that are sending out radiation. To We put that in water to heat the water up. That water then it gets superheated and heats other water so that they don't mix, the radiation doesn't leave. That second source of water gets hot. It creates steam that uh, turns a turbine, that moves a generator, that creates electricity. Same concept with hydroelectric. We can use rivers um, to, uh, we can build dams and force the water going down the river to move a turbine that's connected to a generator that produces electricity. Wind turbines, the same concept. We just use the wind to move those. Solar cells are a little different. We, um, there's different ways in which we can capture the solar energy. Um, but one way of doing that would be uh, kind of building on the same concepts. We reflect the sun's light in order to heat up water and then supercharge that water so that it turns into high pressured steam and moves a turbine. Um, there are other forms of solar electricity, but that's just one that kind of fits with the rest of, of these options here. And then finally, we have um, like a combustion, uh, combustion engine like you'd have in the car where we would put um, gasoline into an engine, which would then drive a motor and that motor would generate electricity. All right, so that's like a little basic um, explanation of these seven, seven different sources. If you need more information about them, you should look that up. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna think of those seven, which energy source do you think would be the best option for the rescue team? So, um, you know, let me kind of well, let me, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Let me just set this up. So think about which energy source would be the best option for the rescue team, and then you'll tell me why. Again, you need to use complete sentences to do this, and it's gonna take you more than one sentence, okay? So uh, just be prepared, give me more than one sentence on why you think that option would be the best. And then question number two is why, uh, what do you think would be the worst option? And then again, why and you're going to need to use complete sentences to do that so um, i talked about all seven of these but we have talked in class about the sun and fuel human power and wind the two that we haven't talked about too much are hydroelectric where we take the kinetic energy of the water that's being moved and we use that to drive a generator and this um as we talked about, when generators move, they have magnets in them. Those magnets, as they move, create electrical fields. And so we're able to use the water to move the magnets to generate an electrical field. And that puts out energy 
Um, usually, because um, it's kind of tough to capture that energy, we don't build real big batteries to store that. We put them close to cities so they, the power can go straight into a city and we don't have to worry about trying to, to capture that. The other one is nuclear, uh, where we'll take something like uranium, which um, is is really, um, so radioactivity just means that it has more electrons, more neutrons, more protons, depending on what we're talking about, than it's supposed to. It's very unstable, and as it loses some of that genetic material, I mean genetic, some of that um, atomic material, that produces a lot of energy in the form of radiation. We can take that radiation and heat up water, and then it's the, the exact same thing. We heat up water, turn it into steam, we drive turbines with that. Uh, those turbines have magnets that creates electrical field that we can then send out to a city. So there's a couple of examples. So if we were gonna talk about, like is a nuclear power plant the best option for our rescue team? Well, you know, one big problem with a nuclear power plant is they are typically really big. It's, you can't design a portable power plant to walk around and so um, that would would in and of itself make it like a really bad option uh, to to have for the rescue team the other thing is it's nuclear so if you're in, in a uh, you know in an emergency situation and something falls on your nuclear power plant well now you've got radiation that could leak and that could make the disaster even worse, you know, even worse. So I would put this as like the worst option if it were me. Um, but there are other ones out there that are equally, if not equally, close to equally as bad. And so um, I'm curious about your reasoning in, in all of this. When we say that something like an energy source is the best or the worst, we make a claim. All right. And, you know, there's no official ranking of these. It's just how strong is your evidence to support your reasoning. So, you know, I can give you my reasoning about a nuclear power plant, but someone else may be able to give me just as good, if not better reasoning about a hydroelectric water plant. So um, it all comes down to what is your evidence and how do you support your reasoning to what is the best and what is the worst, okay? The fancy word here is we call these things subjective, which just means it, it's really a matter of opinion, um, but it comes down to how well you can support your opinion as opposed to like, this is the answer. In activity four, <clears throat> we're gonna introduce the, the concept of energy transfer diagrams. And really, um, I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes here showing you how we create these energy transfer diagrams and then spoiler alert that's going to be your homework assignment is to create your own energy transfer diagram all right so we start off with something that looks a lot like the uh, sorting tool that we had okay it's a little different but it's basically the same thing that we've used several times now and we're going to create an energy transfer diagram so that you can see how the energy moves and and where it comes from so i'm going to make an energy uh, transfer diagram of a flashlight getting energy from a battery which is very similar to a system that we've already created in the sim okay so when you start off it's a blank slate like this okay and i start off <clears throat> by uh, grabbing the flashlight card and I think, okay, what kind of energy does that give off? And it gives off light energy. So I put the flashlight, which is the end of this system, into the light energy category, right? Which is what flashlights do. It's great. Um, I can take the battery and move that into the potential energy bin because like the system that we, we looked at in the sim, the flashlight is powered by the battery, which is potential energy. So I could drag the battery card and put that in the potential energy bin. So I can grab it from here and I can put it over here and then grab an arrow and drag, and you can rotate these arrows any direction you need. 
so that it shows that the energy is coming from the charged battery to the flashlight. All right. This shows that the, uh, the energy is moving, right, from the battery to the flashlight. And not only did it move, but it also changed from potential to light energy, okay? So um, we have some, some vocabulary, some new vocabulary here. Transfer means to move from one object to another or one place to another. So as the energy moves from the battery to the flashlight, it transfers from the battery to the flashlight. And then convert means we change from one type to another. So we convert from potential energy to light energy, all right? It also introduces this key concept for us that nothing creates energy. If something has energy, the energy must have been transferred from something else, okay? So uh, keep that in mind, nothing creates energy. Energy gets transferred from one location to another, okay? Energy can be transferred, just like I said, from one object to another and can be converted from one type to another, all right? So you, as you build out your transfer diagram, keep in mind we're talking about um, how energy is transferred from one object to another and how it can be converted to a different type of energy. So your homework is to make your own energy transfer diagram, okay? We also have a new article, how we store energy. And for this article, again, I'm looking for uh, three annotations, all right? So um, you're gonna make an energy transfer diagram and we've got this scenario. We're gonna power a flashlight with a battery using, an ener using energy from the sun as our energy source, all right? So you're gonna show me what that looks like on the energy transfer diagram. You're gonna hand that in, okay? And then uh, you don't need to worry about building the system, all right? You don't need to worry about building the system. And then you're gonna um, you're going to read an article called How We Store Energy. So a lot going on in uh, this particular lesson. The energy transfer um, diagram won't take too long. I don't need it to be overly complicated. You can just have three components with that. And then read the article and give me um, you know, three annotations. In the meantime, I'm going to figure out how to get off uh, the ship here and get back to you guys in class. All right.